over the past month, probably in physics, we've been working to create a cardboard replica model of a carnival gallery game. In this case, um, my group, me, Elliot Hall, and Hunter Lewis, my partner, decided to create a shooting gallery, and this was our inspiration right here. So our original idea, as sketched here, is to have a conveyor belt in the middle that would pull the targets across, and this was eye level. So we began creating it out of Legos and gears, like this scene here. This one was, of course, not rigid enough at all, and could not hold very much weight to pull the conveyor belt. This, we attempted to make it more rigid, and this is where we ran into our first and biggest problem. There was not enough tension, nor could we find a conveyor belt large enough to actually pull any targets. So between the tension and not being able to find a suitable conveyor belt, we decided to scrap the idea, and with a week left, we decided to create a hybrid ring toss forward slash cup pong with moving targets. Something that seems familiar to a carnival. So I, over the weekend, began creating parts to it. I just created a box with some spinning parts on top. You can see me measuring and cutting pieces for it. So while we're here, I'll talk about the electrical components of our design. So there's in our final project, there's two parts. There's one. Both are series circuits, by the way. One is, is both all the lights powered by a 9 volt battery. There's four lights. The second series circuit is a motor connected to a AA battery. And here's a video. There's actually two videos of me painting, but I can only record five minutes on here, so I will only show one. And I painted it in during the week on Friday. Hunter, oops, Hunter was working on our in initial target design. This is what he came up with. So it's the top cardboard piece is spun by a motor that is underneath it, and the middle cardboard piece or that circle provides enough friction to keep the cups from turning extremely fast and making thus making the game impossible. So, our then we came back to school, stitched it all together. Okay, this. This is our final design right here. The cups are spinning and the lights are on. And as you can see, although the weight of the washer kind of makes it increases the friction, you can indeed play the game. Here is the underside. So here's the first series circuit. Here's the nine volt battery and it runs to this battery. I mean to this light, and this light, this light, this light, and back to the battery. It's not plugged in right now, but that'll give you an idea of that one. On top, which we do not actually have a picture of, there's a two double A battery that's connected to the motor that spins the top. So here's our blueprint from the front. So here's the cups up here. Here's our lights. And uh, you can see I created a scale here. So one centimeter on the paper is equal to four centimeters in real life. This is the real life measured lengths. Here's the side of it. Same scale, and here's the top with the cups and the diameter to give you the size or diagonal measurement to give you the full size. And here are our series. So here's our battery. It goes through, and there are four lights. Second series is the motor. So the two AA battery go down, motor, and it runs back through. Overall, I would say for this project that I believe we did. A pretty decent job due to the challenges that between me and Hunter not being there and our original design not working, I think we pulled it together and made a fairly decent project. If we'd had more time, one thing I would have liked to done do is A, create a more um, streamlined design, one that's not quite so rickety, and also perhaps add another mechanism to maybe make the cups move back and forth a little bit. So again, our design is made mostly out of cardboard with a few extra metal parts being the batteries and wires and of course the styrofoam cups. Overall, I think we did a fairly, we did a good job considering our time constraints and our initial troubles that we had.